Sponsored by World of Warships. Stop me if this gets complicated, okay? In Scandinavian folklore, there exists the great legend of the Hall of Warriors. Located in the ancient realm of Asgard, where great warriors, the chosen dead taken by the Valkyries, will one day fight side by side with Odin during the time of Ragnarok. It is known as Valhalla. Perhaps you, being a keyboard warrior yourself, may one day grace these hallowed halls of the slain. And as your eyes wander over the various warriors assembled by the fire, each one reciting their tales of great battles and heroic last stands, your eyes may turn to a shadowy figure in the background. And it may take you some time to realize that this hulking mass that you're looking at is not a man, but an 1800-ton British destroyer, an N-Class to be exact. But this destroyer is not British. This one flies the flag of Poland. Its crew gaze down at you with a thousand yard stare. They raise their drinks in honored salute and in unison recount the tale, the legend of the Prion, the Thunderbolt. But first, add time. Deep in the Norwegian forest of Umlot lived little Timmy. Timmy loved boats, and one day he dreamed of becoming a boats person, going on adventures upon the high seas, fighting in large, spectacularly detailed PvP arenas. But his father said no. No son of mine will ever be a boats person. Ye must work down pit like a good Norwegian, he said in his perfect Norwegian accent, and Timmy cry. But great father Norway see him, and he smile. He come to little Timmy with a gift. Open it, Timmy, he said. And as Timmy gazed upon the wonder that was inside, his eyes were met with the USS Texas, a tier 5 premium. Wow! That's right, piglets. Buckle your chuckle belts, because I beat you not. This video is sponsored by World of Warships, a team-based, free-to-play, open-water, PvP, RPG... No, wait, it's not an RPG, but it could be if it wanted to be. Oh, sire, our village is under siege from these level 3 goblins. Fear not, sir, your typical maiden, for I shall vanquish these foes with the power of 50,000 tons of raw of sharpened butt. World of Warships, it has over 44 million players, one of which is me. Come say hi. I'm terrible at this game. I need help. All you need is a PC and some money. No, wait, you don't need money. It's free. Download it now. Link in the description. Come battle your enemies with five different warship classes to play as. Choose from destroyers, aircraft carriers, cruisers, battleships, and submarines, I guess. If you want to be that guy that sneaks around being all stealthy. There is over 400 ships and they just keep adding more, with new content released every single month. I'll never go to school again! World of Warships fights in huge, stunning, open 12v12 arenas, each one alive with detail! One of these islands has this tiny little truck driving around in it, and it's so cute. Play with friends, play alone, fight players, fight bots, fight your friends! Shoot at each other with gigantic, titanic-sized warships firing shells the size of small cars at each other. What more do you want? You want some free shit? Well, I got you, fam. Download it now, link in the description, and use code FIRE! And you get 200 doubloons, 20 restless fire camouflage, a million credits! That's a lot, by the way. Seven days of a premium account, and best of all, you get the tier five premium battleship USS Texas. Holy sh yeah, you want this, link in the description. The most devastating, the evil looking warship ever built. You want it, download it now, link in the description. It's the Texas. This thing inspired the Star Destroyer. You want it, download now, link in the description. I want this, I don't have this thing. I'm jealous. World of Warships, download it now. Code FIRE, link in the description. Do it now! Finn. Our story begins not with the Prion, but with another ship entirely. 
the Bismarck. Germany's answer to the growing threats of the French and British navies, Bismarck was a testament to Hitler's refusal to acknowledge the Washington Naval Treaty, as well as some other treaties which we don't have time to get into, which limited the size of battleships to about 30,000 tons. And at 50,000 tons, this gigantic warship was one of the largest battleships afloat at the time, and still holds the record as being one of the largest warships ever built. She was designed for speed, her guns for accuracy, and yeah, maybe her actual capabilities have been somewhat overstated by the culture of romanticism that surrounds this time period, but she was still a formidable opponent. Massive 15-inch cannons and a further 12 smaller 5.9-inch guns, she posed a tough adversary, destroying the fearsome battlecruiser hood in a mere four-minute-long engagement, granted with a lucky shot. Any captain going against her would have had this in the back of their mind, and during the hunt for the Bismarck as she attempted to escape back to friendly waters, though would Wounded and leaking fuel, smaller ships were advised to simply shadow her until the big guns arrived, and anyone who would be willing to face her with inferior firepower would have been mad. Uh, by comparison, the N-Class was a rather humble destroyer. At 1800 tons, she was built to correct the mistakes of the previous tribal class of destroyers, which had favoured guns over torpedoes, and as a result she only had three turrets of twin 4.7-inch guns, a single 4-inch anti-air gun, four 20mm, and two machine guns, with about enough armour to just about stop a highly aggressive tuna. Brion started life as HMS Nerissa, laid down in Scotland on the River Clyde. After the fall of Poland, she was transferred to the Free Polish Navy before she was even completed, given a Polish crew, a Polish captain whose name I'm not even going to attempt, and a new name, Prion the Lightning, or the Thunderbolt. Uh, sources differ. The name Prion could equally mean Lightning as it could mean Thunderbolt. I've got two sources that say Thunderbolt and two sources that say Lightning. Prion is Polish for Lightning, and Thunderbolt is Prion Prion, I think. I, I, look, I don't know Polish outside of Kurwa, so your guess is as good as mine. Unless you're actually Polish, and you know the language fairly well being Polish. If you do, let me know how stupid I'm being, and I'll apologize in the comments. And I will probably be buried under all the people screaming, We want an F-111 video! You promised an F-111 advert video, where is it? You know what, if this video gets a bajillion likes, I'll do it, okay? Anyway, now normally in British naval tradition, it is considered quite unlucky to rename a ship after she has been laid down. But for the Prion, luck would never be in short supply. She remained based on the River Clyde until she was finally completed in November of 1940. Here she would serve in the Battle of Britain, escorting convoys of smaller ships around the coast. But when she was damaged in an air attack, she was forced to return to the Clyde for repairs, but found that her docks in the nearby town were coming under nightly bombardment by patrol bombers. So the Prion being the Prion, in spite of being heavily damaged and still under repairs, steamed up and down the Clyde, blanketing the skies with a dense layer of flak, risking hits from bombers every second she broke cover. Her heroics earned her the admiration of the locals and a memorial to her stands to this day in the town of Clyde Bank, where I've never been, because it's a hole. And you think that would be it, the brave little destroyer facing off against the might of the Luftwaffe, defending a Scottish town against waves of bombers? But no, sir. Prion wasn't done. She was hungry for revenge. She wanted blood. She wanted to make her mark against the Germans and remind them that Poland was down, but not out. And in May of 1941, she would get that chance. In the aftermath of the Battle of the Denmark Strait, with the hood having been sunk by the Bismarck... It's a great moment for the German Navy. Yes, Lindemann. And for the two of us. And the Prince of Wales heavily damaged, Britain was devastated. Its national pride had been hurt, and it demanded vengeance. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill would send out an order down the chain of command to every battleship, destroyer, cruiser, submarine, and fishing boat with a rifle duct taped to the front that would countermand all other orders. Find that bloody ship and sink it! <laughs> At the time, Priam was on escort duty with four other destroyers, heading for the Indian Ocean. Three days in and the order came through, and they were detached from the convoy to join the hunt. Now, the Bismarck might have been a very, very large ship, 
but in comparison to the entirety of the North Sea, it was, uh, well, let me put it like this. Finding the best park in something the size of the ocean was like trying to find a single drop of coffee in an entire swimming pool filled with fish. And they're just flapping all over the place and you need your caffeine fix, but where the hell has your boyfriend hidden that cup and what kind of prank even is this? Anyway, Bismarck. By now she had four battleships, two battlecruisers, two aircraft carriers, 13 cruisers, and 21 destroyers, along with a mix of numerous aircraft and a cruise ship out hunting for her, in an area of ocean over 220,000 square miles in size. To put that in perspective, if you were to take all that ocean and convert it into farmland, you could grow enough turnips to create your own turnip moon. That's how big we're talking here. However, because this battle is largely told from the British perspective, much emphasis is placed on the actions of Force H. Force H was flagged by the battlecruiser Renown, Hood's sister ship. The crew were anxious to avenge her sunken sister, but she was ordered not to engage. Only the carrier Arc Royale, which did not even have its full complement of aircraft on board, could safely strike at the Bismarck, famously jamming her rudder and preventing her from manoeuvring during a series of low-altitude torpedo runs. This would be the death kneel of the Bismarck, and in the morning the home fleet would arrive, and the final battle of the Bismarck would begin. However, before this engagement, another lesser documented battle took place. Destroyers of the Fourth Fleet were ordered to shadow and harass the ship with torpedo runs throughout the night. Prion paired with the destroyer HMS Maori and spotted the ship just before sunset, making her the first ship to actively spot the Bismarck during the final battle. After reporting her position and confirming that the Bismarck was indeed unmaneuverable, the Maori moved off to begin her torpedo run. But as the Maori looked behind her to see if the Prion was in position, they saw a horrifying sight, and realised that something was deeply, tragically wrong. The Preron was charging directly towards the Bismarck at full speed. Worried her steering was jammed, Maori broke radio silence and attempted to hail the Preron, but received no response. On board the Bismarck, the crew, now at battle stations, turned their attention to the small flotilla of British destroyers, and were surprised to see one apparently charging them. In disbelief, they watched as the tiny destroyer turned, showing its full broadside to the Bismarck, and with both its signal lights and its wireless, transmitted the message, I am a pole, before it opened fire. For over an hour, the two ships fought mano a mano, pride of the German fleet versus one single Polish destroyer. The Bismarck completely unable to hit the Prion as it dodged and weaved through fire, ignoring the numerous orders to fall back, all while continuing to broadcast, I am a Pole, three salvos for the honour of Poland, directly at the Bismarck. Her confused crew trying desperately to keep the tiny ship in view as it fired salvo after salvo. And when I mean the Prion was firing salvos, I mean it was firing all of its guns. The 4.7 inchers, the anti-aircraft guns, even the machine guns were firing. There's even tales of all the crew out on deck screaming insults and shooting pistols, throwing trash at the Bismarck as they strafed her, at one point even bringing musical instruments onto the deck and singing the national anthem of Poland. Eventually, with the Bismarck's gun throwing great plumes of water over the tiny Prion at a distance of less than 20 metres away, the ship was finally forced to break off its engagement. It would remain in the area defying orders to return to port until its fuel reserves forced it to finally return home. After the smoke had cleared, post-analytics of the Bismarck's final battle with the home fleet showed that the Bismarck had hit absolutely nothing. In spite of firing almost every shell she had, the only damage reported was HMS Rodney, who had shattered part of her own mainframe from firing her guns at point-blank range. A major contributor to the Bismarck's sluggish performance had been down to crew morale and exhaustion. The entire crew had been on battle alert for nearly 48 hours, and consistent night attacks and harassment had led to the crew just simply not being able to focus. After all, exactly how much sleep can you expect to get when you have an angry Polish warship screaming at you, flashing its lights, throwing trash and singing all night? Prion would remain in service, operating in the Mediterranean, guarding convoys, and even took part in Operation Halbert, the largest convoy attempt to resupply Malta, the invasion of Sicily, and even the Normandy invasion, engaging remnants of the German surface fleet off the coast of Brittany. After the war, she assisted in the decommissioning of German U-boats before she was returned to the British where she became HMS Noble and was finally decommissioned in 1955. 
While in the British retellings of the sinking of the Bismarck, the story of the brave Polish destroyer who took it on single-handed at a time where ships far more powerful than her were afraid to even approach has been assigned to the footnotes of history, its presence and courage overshadowed by the more interesting British exploits. In Poland, it has lived on in legacy. The name Prion would be reused, with the new ship's naming ceremony inviting survivors of the original ship and even commemorating it on a special coin, proving that the legacy of the ship is still alive and maybe deserves a little bit more recognition. I for one feel that the Prion has earned its place in Stovacor! I mean Valhalla. What did I say? Anyway, something, something, something. I need a drink. I hope you learned something. And again, special thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring this video, which isn't no word of a lie, a game I do play and actually enjoy. Plus, it was nice to have a sponsorship offer from someone that wasn't an obvious scam. You get a lot of those when you're a small channel. So anyway, come join me in World of Warships, code fire, get your free Texas. It's a damn good ship. I don't have a Texas. That thing is five and a half thousand doubloons. You get it for free, you lucky sods. Anyway, to World of Warships, this one goes out to you. And I'm not even sorry. Can you find pleasure? Search the wealth treasure. Then science, technology. Where can you begin to make your dreams all come true on the land or on the sea? Where can you learn how to play in sports and skin dive study oceanography? Sign up for the big band or sit in the grandstand when your team and others meet. In the Navy! Yes, you can sail the seven seas! In the Navy! Yes, you can put your mind at ease! In the Navy! Yeah, more than people make a stand! In the Navy! Get your saving in hand! In the Navy! Come on, protect the middle land! In the Navy! Come on and join your fellow man! In the Navy! Come on, people make a stand!